Let's go over the effect controls in Premiere Pro. You can forget about all this stuff. We're mainly going to be concerned with the effect control panel over here. If you don't see that on your screen, go up to Window and select Effect Controls right here and that'll appear somewhere. You can drag it where anywhere you want. I'm going to leave mine up here. If I alt clicked on the video, what I get is the video effects up here. If I alt clicked on the audio, what I do is I get the audio effects here. Since these two are linked together, I get the video and audio effects. If you want to, take your video and link your audio below it if you need to, unless your audio is included. You'll see the same thing I see. Let's walk through these one at a time. First, we have the position. The position is simply the X and Y position of where the video is sitting on it. If I move this over to the left and right, you'll see the video move. Let's undo that. If I move this, you'll see the video move up and down. Let's undo that. You can click and drag these numbers. There it goes to the right. Click and drag this. There it goes down. If you ever do something and you want to return it to its original position, Right here, each one of these is basically returns it to its original position. Here we go. Boop, just like that. Next is the scale. This is the scale. It starts at 100%. You can make it bigger and you can make it smaller. You can also grab the corners over here and do it by hand using the mouse. Let's reset that to its default. If you flip down this little guy right here, you'll see scale width. Right now they're linked together, so when I move them, the width and the height move together. Basically what this is telling you is it's a uniform scale. No matter how big or small I make it, it's gonna uniformly do the height and width. If I turn off uniform scale, now I can scale the width separately, whoa, and I can scale the height separately. This can come in handy sometimes, I rarely use it. If you get into problems or something like that, remember you can set all this. Let's turn uniform scale back on, it resets. Let's clear this back to 100%. And close that up since we don't use it, since I use the uniform scale all the time. Next is the rotation. You can move the video right a number of degrees or left a number of degrees, however much you want. And watch what happens when I go past 360 degrees. Notice here it says 1x 48 degrees. That means I moved it one time 360 degrees plus something. If I keep rolling this, now it's three times. Let's reset that for a moment. If I wanted to take and spin this one, two, three times over the length of the video as it was playing, and that's how I would do that. We'll cover that later. But that's how you rotate things up and down right there. Next is the anchor point. You notice when I click on that, you'll see this little line right here. What that's telling me is where its mid location is. In other words, if I rotate this, it's going to rotate around that particular anchor point. Let's undo that. Now I could take this anchor point and move it. Let's say I move the anchor point all the way over to the edge of the video here. Now when I rotate it, it's going to rotate around that anchor point right there. Let's reset this. So for instance, if I wanted to roll the thing left and right at the top left anchor point, I could take and run this anchor point up to the top here, or I could simply type it in. We already know that's going to be zero, and we know this one's going to be zero. Now the anchor point has been set to the top left of that. Notice the location is 1920 by 1080. Therefore, these would now be zero and zero. Now we're back. This is really handy. Now everything is set up to this top left corner for me. If I do any rotation on this point, it's gonna be from the top left corner. This comes from really handy. You can move this anchor point anywhere on whatever you want depending on what you're doing, and then all your movements and your rotations and everything will be based off that anchor point. By the way, if I go to the very top up here, this reset resets all these parameters. It's really handy. 
pink. We're back to normal then. We see our anchor points right there in the middle. Next is the anti-flicker filter. Sometimes you can get a flickery look. This will help you with that. Personally, I've never really used it and I've seen no need for it. Next is the section on opacity. Opacity goes from zero to 100%. It's not how bright the image is, it's how see-through the image is. Here, let me show you. I'm gonna move me up one, and below that, I'm gonna stick another image under it. Now let's move the opacity down, and as I move it down, the image below it, you start to see it until it totally disappears, and there it is again. I can go over here and click on this. Let's turn it to zero. That's totally opaque, which means you can see all the way through it. If I go back to 100%, there's no transparency at all. Right above us, we have a circle, a square, or a pen icon. It allows you to show just a circle, the square, or your defined area. Here, let me show you. So let's take the circle. Now I have a circle on the screen. That's the only part I see. So everything else is masked out except just this circular area. You can click on these handles, make the circle bigger, define it however you want. Let's click on that and delete that. Let's use this rectangular tool. Again, it'll place this up here. You can select both of these, move them up. Now we have a square area. Select these corners, move them this way. And in fact, you can even do some waggy things like moving them wherever you want. It's just showing me in this image, and it's letting what's below it show through. If I didn't have this below there, you would just see black. Let me delete this one. Last one is the pen tool, and that's kind of a free form tool. I can click here, 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 up there, down there, over here, over there, up there, back down there. It's getting crazy, isn't it? Up here, way over here, and now I'll close it up and watch what happens. Bink. So now we have this crazy thing like that. You can use this for all sorts of effects. And remember, you can go over and grab each of these corners and move them however you want to. Now take a look at this little square down here that says inverted. If I click on that, it inverts everything I just did. So now it's masking through everything on this really strange area I made and lets everything else come through. Let's do that again. There's not inverted, inverted. There's not inverted. The other thing to note is the mask has its own properties. You have mask path, mask feather, mask opacity, and mask expansion. We'll be covering those in a different episode when I go deep dive into masks. Let's click on the mask, hit delete, and it's gone. Also, blend mode has all sorts of interesting properties. I won't get into these right now. We'll cover all of these in a later episode. I usually use the normal mode, but all these others have some pretty cool things you can do. For instance, here's the color burn. Yeah, <laughs> what it does is it takes all the colors and it burns them all in like that. You can create some really interesting effects, but we'll cover all that later. Let's go back to normal. Next, we have time remapping. This is how you speed up or slow down your video, and it is also done over time. We'll be covering that in more detail in a later episode. Let's talk about audio. I have my video and my audio linked together, which is why it shows up in this panel. The main thing I wanted to cover here is the level. It makes it louder and softer. I use it a lot on my music when I include music in here, but if you find your talking is too low or it's too high, you can move this up and down just a little bit just to, just to cut it down quite a bit. For instance, I use music in most of my videos. I'll turn the music way down so people can hear what I'm talking about. I usually recommend you set it between minus 32, minus 26, something like that. It just depends on your video. And for me as a tip, when I'm editing, I usually go through and I edit the whole video. I do all my cuts, I do all my zoom shots and everything else and I save the audio to last. Too many times I've added a bunch of really cool musical shots and everything else, and I come in later and I have to make a lot of cuts. It just makes you crazy. So go ahead and edit your video the way you want it, and then throw your music in last and make those cuts later. Now here we have channel volume. This is if you want to control the left and right 
speakers if you're using stereo. I rarely use this. But it's especially helpful if you have a sound effect. For instance, you could have a sound effect coming from the left to the right. You would just decrease it and increase it and then decrease it again as it goes by. Down here we have a panner. Because the balance is usually set to the middle, what you can do is you can take and you can take the balance and you can move it to the left and move it to the right. I suggest, especially with voice, that you keep it at zero. I'll be going into a lot greater detail in future videos. Make sure you like, subscribe, and hit thumbs up for me. I hope this helps. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Chicka chick 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 I'm the basic filmmaker. I'm making a video. La 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 la. What do you think?